Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech on a given Monday. It's the one o'clock block, and uh, we're looking from the east. And we're looking to Steve Zercher, um, and he is uh, in Kobe, Japan, at uh, Kan Kansai Gaidai University, um, teaching entrepreneurship and business, and doing a lot of administration these days because it has to be done. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about life in Kobe, life in Japan, and life with the virus right now with Steve Zercher. Hi, Steve. Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. It's uh, good to join you as usual, Jay. I appreciate it. It'd be nice if it was under better circumstances, but uh, we're doing the best we can. Well, I think it's important that we talk to you. We've been talking to people really hither and yon, and we want to, mm -hmm. you know, may I say, take, take your temperature in Kobe um, and yeah. see what's happening in <laughs> Don't get that. <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're gonna, we want to find out what's right happening now, but in, in education in Kansai Gaidai and Gaidai and, uh, and what yeah. you're doing. Well, let, let me first kind of just catch up everybody on the situation in Japan, uh -huh. which is not good, unfortunately. Um, so I checked this morning uh, outside of the Diamond Princess, which is its own separate category. If you look at the list of uh, infections, Japan's now gone over 500. We're at 530 cases. And every day it's increasing. So despite the efforts of uh, the Prime Minister and the Ministry of Health um, to try and reduce the number of infections, um, the, the increase is still continuing here. And there's a sense well, that it's the, going to What's the mortality go, rate? How many people have you lost? Nine people have died, so uh, mostly older people. Um, so the death rate is not as high as like the United States, the U.S. Uh, I noticed this morning the U.S. actually has more infections now than Japan. That was not the case last week, but the U.S. is moving up rapidly. Well, but I think the mortality the rate infections in are directly proportionate to the amount of testing going on. So uh, in the U.S., we're probably not testing enough because we don't have the test kits. So you have yeah, a, a, that, an understated number of cases and the, the deaths, well, you know, the, they are what they are. So that our rate may be higher as against the known cases. The known cases yes, may I, be I less than so. the real and, cases. So what about you? Are, it, are you testing? Is Japan testing? No, no. We're in the same boat as the United States. There's a sense that uh, there are many, many more people that are infected because the testing policy the number of kits that's been distributed is quite low. This is a major criticism of the Japanese government right now, that they've totally mishandled the testing aspect of mm -hmm. the coronavirus and mm -hmm. infections. Mm -hmm. So I think the general opinion is that uh, these numbers, the ones that I just gave you, 530, are woefully underreported, and that the number of people who have infections is much, much higher. Mm -hmm. So one other thing to report is that uh, Today, the Diet, which is the Congress equivalent, is going to pass legislation allowing the, the uh, Prime Minister Abe to declare a state of emergency. So he would be able to shut down businesses, order events to be closed. Um, about two weeks ago, he recommended that schools close, and about half of them have. But uh, with this state of emergency legislation being passed, he may begin to order schools to be closed, and they'll have to do it. So that's the situation um, right now. So we're, uh, I'm kind of expecting that with this legislation being passed, uh, that the, minister, the Prime Minister Abe, who's been criticized for doing too little in the first five or six weeks of, of the coronavirus arriving, especially with the Diamond Princess, that was a disaster. Just the government mishandled that. Terribly. I think I, I told you two weeks ago that they actually allowed people to go off the boat directly into the public. They were getting on trains and taxis and going home. You know, when the U.S. was taking people off that boat, they put them automatically into a 14-day quarantine at the uh, Air Force bases and so forth. But the Japanese government said, yeah, just go home. It's okay. And now the infection rate is uh, being linked it back to those people who came off the boat who were not showing symptoms at the time when they were leaving, but are showing symptoms now or are actually sick now. So what, what is the government doing in terms of containment right now, aside from this closing the schools? Uh, they're also um, 
people from China and Korea, South Korea, are no longer allowed in the country. That just went down yesterday. So previously, people who were coming from those countries were uh, being recommended to go into self-quarantine for 14 days. But now they're getting much stricter about that. So that 3 million visas have been canceled now, mostly Chinese tourists that were planning to come over the next uh, month or so. I think it, it goes for the next month that uh, visas from those two countries are now invalidated. So getting stricter when it comes to uh, allowing people from level three countries like South Korea and China. J Korea has retaliated and is not allowing any Japanese citizens to go to Korea now as well. Actually, Japan's, the number of countries that no longer allow Japanese people to visit, it's in the mid twenties. Like Israel is one example, no Japanese people can go there. So, so there is a, uh, some kind of tip. What about the, about the health system in general? Is the is the Japanese health system uh, adequate to handle these five hundred and thirty cases and and more as they as they appear? Uh, that's also uh, a major worry. That uh, if this the infection rate really takes off, like it has in Korea, or in Germany, or France, or other countries, or the United States, frankly, for that matter, if the numbers really increase. <clears throat> there's a sense. <clears throat> that uh, the Japanese health system, although we have socialized medicine here and everyone is eligible, we don't have that problem that uh, we have in the United States. Um, there's not a sense of confidence that the health system here will be able to handle the number of people potentially that could become infected over the next couple of months. So there's worries about that as well. How about the availability so a lack of, of testing masks? Kits. Masks and, uh, and sanitizing lotion and all that. Is that, is that easily, um, yeah. easily so, obtainable? No, there, it's, it's totally sold out now. So uh, I was in Costco just about a week or so ago, and they were giving one box per customer. So it's under a quota. Costco had some supply. By the way, I don't know if this is happening in Hawaii, but every single person going into Costco that day was buying toilet paper. I've never seen anything like that in my life before. I, there was an executive uh, who was there at that store and I started talking to him. I said, what's going on? And he said, we have no idea, but we've sold $175,000 of toilet paper in the last two days. That's so irrational. It's just, it's just... I know, but it's, there's panic. It just shows the, the, the worry that's out there right now. I don't know why it's fixating on toilet paper because there's no shortage whatsoever. Well, I think it, it happened here. It is happening here in the same way. And Oh. And uh, the, the hoarding notion, and it, it, here in Hawaii, I recall that in the uh, late 40s, there were shipping strikes, dock strikes, and uh, mm. people, you know, couldn't get toilet paper for one reason, so they began mm. hoarding it. And mm. ever since then, it has been a cultural phenomenon here in mm. Hawaii. And maybe it's spread from here to Japan, you know. There's no good reason <laughs> for so. it. There's no good reason, but there you go. Yeah, if you're familiar with the Costco toilet uh, packages, they're huge. There's like 30 rolls. Some yeah. some uh, women there, they had four of those. I mean, that's oh. enough toilet paper for a year. Yeah. It was just remarkable to observe that. Are people hoarding other things? Are they, uh, are they bringing food? Um, home, I think it, uh, I'll be going to Costco today. At least I'm hoping to. Mm -hmm. um, but when I was there about a week and a half ago, it was also rice and some food staples. But mostly it was toilet paper. That was clear. I mean, it, it, it was incredible. Well, the, the so the Costco masks, here in you know, Honolulu had a had a line last time I knew a few days ago. The line was yeah, like half was, a mile long. Nobody could get in to the parking lot to go shopping. Yeah, right. I experienced that once in Hawaii when a hurricane was coming in during one of the summers I was teaching there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's quite warm. I'm sure it'll be very crowded when I go there today. The other thing too, Jay, I wanted to talk about is what I'm doing at school at Kansai Gaida. As you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the dean there. Um, so congratulations! It's been by a very. Way. I'd like to congratulate. Yeah, thank you. As and I understand the word has it here in Hawaii that you were also awarded the best teacher of the year award. In addition to that, oh, so, Jay, you have very good sources. I don't know how you found that out, but that's <laughs> that's correct. And uh, thank you very much. If we do have an entrance ceremony, I'll be standing up there with my plaque and, you know, in front of the thousands of new students. So 
It's the first time a foreigner has received that award. Oh, too. congratulations so that's a, a, again. Yeah. yeah. Great. So um, we've, we have about 15 or 20 students that have already returned. Now, again, I'm the dean of the International Exchange Program. So we have 300 or we had 300 students um, who were visiting Japan from various universities all over the world, the majority uh, from the United States. So we've had infections in the local city where our school is located. Um, there is this edict or order that has come down from the prime minister that schools should close. I'm looking at the flights being restricted. I'm looking at self-imposed um, quarantines for people arriving in America, arriving in various countries. So I set up a committee and we decided and we announced yesterday that we are highly recommending that our students return to their home institutions. So back to America, back to Europe, uh, back to other parts of Asia. And also all of our classes in terms of classroom activity are is ended. We're going to continue to teach online because our students need these credits in order to be on a graduation path. So we're doing the very best we can to teach indirectly or online for the remainder of the semester. But this is a huge disruption and uh, it's a great burden I'm placing on the professors because online education in Japan really doesn't exist. It's not as popular as it is in the United States or other locations. And of course the students, they love, everybody loves Japan, right? It, you know, the cherry blossoms are beginning to come out now. It's, we're going into a really beautiful time here and they, they don't want to leave. So I'm sure when they get the message today, we'll send the message out to the students this morning. And they're not going to be, uh, they're going to be disappointed as well. Mm. So well, it's, it's if been they really go rough. back to their homes, let's say they go back to the United States. <clears throat> Hopefully they won't have any issue getting back. Uh, that may not be as easy as it sounds. Um, can they continue to take the classes uh, by remote uh, online? Yes, that's our plan. So, um, I actually shut down classroom activity as of last week, although the students were all still local. Mm -hmm. We hadn't made the announcement that we wanted them to return home. Um, so we began to teach indirectly using Zoom or other technology, or some professors were uploading their slides and creating podcasts. It's, it's actually been gratifying to see how innovative and creative the professors have been, uh, given this sudden announcement that we're no longer teaching in the classroom, which you know, many of them have been doing for 30 years. Um, so for the duration of the semester, if at all possible, there may be some courses that cannot be continued, like uh, maybe there's a studio art course or some kind of uh, communication class, which is very dependent on team activity and presentations. Those courses may have to be canceled, in which case we'll give the students a withdrawal and try and provide credit for them is what we're thinking. But we're hoping the majority of the courses will be continued to be taught, but indirectly. So we bought a bunch of Zoom licenses uh, yesterday, and we're going to do uh, some training with the professors to try and bring them up to speed on that technology. It's not as slick as what we're using right now, Jay, but um, you know, hopefully they'll come up to speed on it quickly and be able to uh, not do 100% of what they would be able to do in the classroom, but do enough so that they feel confident that they can issue a grade and give credit for the course for the students who are now teaching indirectly or who are now receiving the courses indirectly. Very good. And Zoom is a good program for sure. That, that was a good choice. Oh, yeah, choice. it's fantastic. So, but my question is this. So, okay, so you've, you've made a policy and a procedure and uh, you are, will shortly articulate it to, to everybody um, for this semester. That's this semester. I, I assume this yeah. semester ends at the end of May, early June. Um, and, end of May, yes. And, and and you may have some summer programs, or if you don't, you'll certainly have another semester starting yeah, we in have, September. Um, yeah, we and, have 19 students registered for a summer program now, yeah. but um, we're, many of them are from Hong Kong, so I'm not quite sure if Japan will accept people from Hong Kong at that time. You know, there's just so many variables here, and the sense is that things are going to get worse before they get better that we haven't, Japan hasn't hit the peak yet. So we well, may have to what's cancel the that and then- Yeah, what, so what's the plan? I mean, you have summer, you have the fall, you have next spring. I mean, 
there's really nothing on the horizon uh, that says, Steve, you don't have to worry after August 1st. You know, there's nothing coming down the pipe that says that. What, no, what's, what's no I don't think it's all going to disappear. <laughs> yeah, I don't, that is not going to happen. So in the communication I said to the partners, I mean, this is maybe my uh, being overly optimistic. I said, we are planning for the fall semester to be normal and we'll conduct classroom activity. I'm trying to let them know that that's what our expectation is. But you're absolutely right, Jay. I have no idea. The problem for us and for all the schools, this is worldwide now, not just Kansai Gaidai, students are making up their mind right now about going abroad. The application period is now. And given how bad the news is right now, we expect our applications are just going to dramatically shrink. So it could be that uh, I'll be kind of lonely and maybe I'll have five students in my class as opposed to the 33 that I have right now. This is not good for the, uh, uh, the, 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 the finances of the university or any university in Japan. And, and I want to I well, take you on a little you know, vision of uh, Christmas future here for a moment uh, from your point of view as a, a one who teaches business and entrepreneurial activity. Um, this is this is all going to filter out into the community. So you have, you know, what, what we know so far is uh, schools are closing. We know that oil prices are down. We know the stock market is, uh, you know, in the tank and and not likely to bounce right back up either. Um, the question I put to you, though, is how is this going to how is these phenomena going to filter out into other parts of the economy? This is a hard question. Where will we see things yeah. happen next, uh, and, and what will be the result? Yeah, Japan was already vulnerable to economic downturn. Actually, in Q4, the numbers were just revised yesterday. The economy shrank 7.1% wow. in Q4 of 2019, and that's mostly because in October, the Abe government raised sales tax just 2%, but it was a, had a significant effect on investment decisions and on consumer buying activity. So coming out of Q4, before all of this coronavirus issue started, the Japan economy was already sliding at a pretty significant rate. And it's only going to get worse. So this quarter will definitely be negative growth. It could be, I'm, I'm not, I'm, you know, I can just off the top of my head, we could have 10 or 12%. Uh, negative growth, which would put Japan technically into a recession. So that's what the economists are expecting. So the, the number three economy in the world will begin to shrink quite significantly. And the hardest hit industries, of course, are tourism, the airline industry. The Chinese and Koreans make up 50% of our foreign tourists. That is now gone, right? So... Just at a, at a personal level, when I go around town, when I, I'm on the trains and when I'm going to Kyoto and other, it, it just feels eerily empty. It's, it's so different from what it was just a few months ago. So there's, you can see it with your eyes and you can feel it. The economic activity is shrinking significantly. Well, but so that doesn't happen uh, in a vacuum either. I mean, I'm, uh, two, two questions uh, pop out of that I wanted to ask you. Number one is... Um, certainly, Japan does not live in a vacuum. It's a number three economy. Um, it's going to have an effect globally. Uh, what's the Christmas future for that? And, you know, the sort of the interaction between these big economies, uh, how does that play out? The second thing is, uh, not the same question, but I, I still like to know, um, how is it going to affect the, the man in the street? How, or the woman in the street? How is it going to affect jobs? How is it going to affect disposable income? How is it going to affect the acquisition of consumer goods? How, how is it going to affect the quality of life um, and the disparity of income? Well, I think to your first question, uh, I, definitely this will have a chilling effect on international trade. You know, we talked a, a couple of weeks ago to Jay about uh, the virus's effect on actual products. You know, I, I, I don't know if we have clarity on that or not, but it may result in people being a little bit reluctant to buy goods from China or from Korea or now maybe even from Japan for those of uh, worldwide consumers that are looking at Japanese products. So I think there's a direct impact that the economies are shrinking, consumer activity is going down. Japanese people, when they face these types of uh, 
crises, uh, their amount of spending goes down dramatically. They, they go into savings mode. This is just what happens time and time again. After we have a major earthquake, uh, consumer activity goes way down. It takes about six months to 12 months to go back up to the pre-earthquake or pre-crisis, pre-disaster levels. So that will have a profound effect, I think, on worldwide economic activity. I, I mean, basically, Jay, I think we're Maybe we're heading in the direction anyway towards a worldwide recession, but this may push us over the edge. I don't know. It may be quite significant. At the street level, though, uh, you can tell people are very concerned. Maybe like 70% of them are wearing masks. Um, the trains are not so crowded. Many people are beginning to work at home, even though that's not a part of Japanese business culture. Companies like people to be in their desks. Yeah. They're not very productive, but they like to, them to be there. Uh, so that they can be observed. That's one of the major measurements of, of uh, success is how many hours you spend at your job. Not, it's not how productive you are here, it's how many hours you spend. But that's changing a bit. Um, some of uh, the companies, you know, mirroring Microsoft and others in America are saying, work at home or maybe work on shifts. So rather than crowd into the trains all at the same time, which is a normal pattern, between 8 and 8.30, the trains are just jammed. So they're staggering entrance times. So there's been some adaptation now occurring by businesses and by people to try and minimize the amount of risk. But I, I don't, other than panic buying, like for toilet paper and things like that, which I've observed directly, uh, I think people over here, they're concerned, but they're not overly concerned. There's this, a sense of that things, you still see people not wearing masks. So uh, there's some people who uh, are, are not at that level and they're not, Know, protecting themselves. I, some per people have ma have two masks on, and have plastic gloves on when they're on the trains. I, I saw that yesterday for the first time. But there's a good percentage of people, maybe about 30 percent, that are still carrying on in a normal way. I'm sure they are worried or aware of what's going on, but they it's not at the level where they're changing their behavior. Do, do the Japanese, um, uh, unlike the Americans, do they have money in the bank, or are they living paycheck to paycheck? Well, Japan, since the Koizumi administration, have had this separation in, in income. You know, we have the, the rich getting richer and the middle class slowly descending in, you know, into the lower levels. The, uh, the, the average income for the middle class has actually been trending down, but not as significantly as the United States. And also Japanese savings rates historically have been much higher. Mm -hmm. So especially the generation that built Japan, you know, coming out of World War II, the people in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and so forth, they're, they're quite well off. This is still a very rich country. There's still uh, tr billions, trillions of dollars in savings in various vehicles in Japan. So uh, that, I don't think, is a major worry. I don't, you know, I've read in, in America, 50% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Uh, I would suspect that that number in, in Japan is much, much lower. Mm, interesting. Now, what about investment? You know, if you have, um, you know, a sort of the lack of confidence that comes with a, re a recession, people don't, you know, necessarily see a bright future. And therefore, they're less likely, I say people, I mean, also corporations and capital concentrations as well. They're less likely to invest in the future. And for example, if X car company would otherwise come out with a brand new, exciting automobile product, they may say, well, we want to put the kind of money in right now. We can't sell it so quick. Mm -hmm. So we're going to slow down our investment into the future. Uh, what, you have concern about that? Yeah, that's been a problem before the, the virus issue. Yeah, the Japanese corporations, because of tax policies, which mirror somewhat um, United States tax policies, they have tremendous amounts of money that they're just sitting on and doing nothing. I mean, there's trillions of dollars out there. And they have been reluctant to invest, especially in Japan, because Japan's in kind of a no growth uh, zone right now. It really hasn't grown economically over the last almost 30 years now. So I think this will just make things worse. It'll make companies and people even more hesitant to make those types of investments. So mm -hmm. that we could begin on this downward cycle. I mean, we're somewhat in that cycle now in Japan, but it could accelerate with uh, the COVID-19 uh, health issues that sure, we're facing sure. right now. Well, let me give you a hypothetical. My hypothetical is okay. that sometime in July, 
let's take July. Uh, somebody comes up, you know, uh, with uh, some new technology that can figure out a more effective way to contain the disease. Quarantine, uh, who knows what? Maybe peanut butter, who knows? Um, and <laughs> peanut butter. Oh, why did I think I have before? some in my refrigerator? <laughs> so, okay, so now it looks like we're going to be able to beat this thing. Okay. Now you mentioned before uh, that, you know, when there's an eruption in Japan or an earthquake, what have you, um, six months, uh, you know, people have uh, below standard confidence and consumer spending goes down. How much right. time will it take? For Japan to get to its normal balance, whatever that is, uh, once we discover a way to stop, you know, the incident of disease. Yeah, uh, I would say if we April, May, maybe we hit the peak in Japan if we follow other countries, and then hopefully the policies uh, or some kind of a vaccine, some kind of. Uh, new discovery occurs and we get to into the summer months and there's a sense that, okay, we've gotten through the worst of this and we're on a recovery. Uh, given the fragility of the Japanese economy, it probably will take a year. So I would say probably summer of 2021, things would return to normal. Mm. It would take a while. So what's your advice? What's your advice to an American student in Japan? What's your advice to the Japanese citizen, a business person? What's your advice to the man on the street anywhere and everywhere? Uh, how to deal yeah. with this? Yeah. Yeah. Well, for my students, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm telling them these are the international students. I'm strongly recommending that they go home. Mm -hmm. You know, although I, you know, we have Italian students, so you know, <laughs> that's why I didn't make it mandatory. It may be safer for some of our students to stay in you Japan, bet. like yes. Korean students. So that's why we left that open. Um, when we had the Tohoku disaster in spring 2011, a lot of foreign business people took off. I mean, that had nuclear risk involved, as you probably remember. Sure. Um, so I think many foreigners, if this does really uh, increase in terms of the number of infections, we may see people leaving uh, for a, a short period of time. And then some, in, in that instance, didn't come back. You know, I'm, I'm rooted here. My family is here. There are many uh, foreigners that have been here long term, so you know we're going to have to just grin and bear it and make our way through this. Um, I, think, know, I think that's it, me, you know, I think that's it. I, I think that's yeah. the advice that you would give. Uh, stay in yeah. place. Keep on doing the reasonable thing. Keep educating yourself, following the action, and, and grin and bear it. That's, I think that's yeah. what emerges as a way to deal with this. Don't panic. Um, don't do anything yep. remarkable. Just keep on trucking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I have, uh, my students are asking me, you know, what, what kind of investments can I make now? How can we, you know, every crisis is an opportunity. Certainly uh, buying stock in Zoom or, or these types of software products that allow indirect instruction. Yeah. I'm sure they're going to be doing great. Yeah. Um, my students asked me last week, should we buy in the stock market now? Because have we hit bottom? And I said, I don't think so. So I was right about that. <laughs> after today. <laughs> well, what would I your know, answer to that know. question be today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I have to think about that one. I'm going to ask you but the yeah, same I... question in, in two weeks, Steve. Okay. Uh, we're out of time here today, but we have to follow this conversation. Right. I'm so curious and, and empathetic about what's happening in Japan. And uh, we Thank want to you, talk Jay. to you again and again about it and find out what's going on because we are in a, a transitional, tra transformational time these days, I think. Thank you so much, Steve. Steve Zercher. My pleasure. Kansai Gadai University. Aloha.